Electrical systems in your RV or camper can be a bit difficult to understand. Not all of us are comfortable with electricity, but we should all have a basic knowledge of what's going on in our rigs. Today I'm going to give a very basic explanation of electricity and electrical systems and answer a few questions. If you don't know anything about this stuff, I hope you will find it educational. If you do know something about this stuff, I hope you'll find it entertaining. So here we go. I'm titling this episode... Very basic electrical stuff for those who really don't care. Ready? Let's hop to it. I guess the best place to start to explain how the electrical systems in your RV or camper work is to explain how basic electricity works. I've watched other videos and most of them get pretty technical and kind of, well, boring. I'm going to try something different. Forget about electricity. Let's talk about babies. <laughs> most of us know about babies or grandbabies. One thing babies want is to eat. So let's say these babies are really fond of juice. Here's a drum of their favorite. We will call it 120 juice. Here's a hungry baby and it would love to have some juice. Now let's say we have three hungry babies. They all want the juice, so we hook up a hose to supply juice to each of them. Here they are sucking juice. This hose has just enough volume so that each of the babies is getting enough juice to keep them happy. One baby might need more juice than the other, but it doesn't matter as long as the total juice they all need doesn't exceed what the hose can supply. Now what happens if we add another hungry baby to the hose? We were already at the limit of the juice being supplied, so this obviously isn't going to be good. In our example, the babies now suck so hard that the hose collapses. Not only that, but all the effort they are putting in trying to get enough juice causes them and the system to overheat. Overheated babies are not a good thing. So let's say we make a modification to the hose. Let's install a special valve that if the draw on the hose exceeds what the hose can supply, the valve will shut off, preventing juice from flowing at all and protecting the babies and system from damage. Without any juice at all, the babies just stop functioning. Uh, wait, let's just say they go to sleep. That's a little more family friendly. So this is how a basic electrical system works. Instead of babies, we have appliances like toasters, hair dryers, coffee makers. The juice we have is actually 120 volt electrical power and the hose is electrical wire. The special valve is naturally a circuit breaker or fuse. Just like the babies, the appliances can only draw so much power at once or else the circuit breaker or fuse will break the flow to protect the system. To finish explaining this stuff, let's bring back the babies. Now you know that this setup represents a 120 volt 30 amp electrical system. If we look at the drum, it has a lot of juice in it and this juice is under pressure. That's what drives the juice down the hose. This pressure, in electrical terms, is the voltage, or volts, and this panel represents a standard 120 volt power source. Understand that? Good. Now let's talk about amperage, or amps. That's how much juice can flow through the hose. The bigger the hose, the more juice that can flow. Likewise, the larger the amperage, the more electricity can flow through the system. The third thing we're going to look at is watts. Each baby needs a certain amount of juice to make them happy. How much they need is their wattage, or watts. Let's say this baby needs 1200 watts of juice. Alright, so now we have a 120 volt source feeding a hose that can allow 30 amps to flow, and it's going to be consumed by this hungry baby that needs 1200 watts to keep it happy. Got it? So now, let's ask the important question. How much draw can a system like this handle? Well, that's simple math. If we take our line pressure of 120 volts and multiply it by the 30 amp that our system can allow, we get a maximum of 3600 watts. So now things make more sense. If all the babies need 1200 watts each, then three babies consume all of the 3600 available watts. When we added the fourth baby, its 1200 watt draw made a total of 4800 watts, which is much more than the system can handle. If you have a 30 amp camper and you try to run a toaster, a hair dryer, and a coffee maker all at the same time, guess what will happen? You exceed the 3600 watts that the system is capable of and you kick out the circuit breaker. So how can you get around this? 
Well, you can't. 30 amps is 30 amps. A lot of people think that by using a dog bone adapter and plugging in their 30 amp camper into a 50 amp socket, they can cheat the system. Sorry, it doesn't work like that. If your camper is wired for 30 amps or 3600 watts maximum, and if you exceed that, you will trip your camper's breaker. You can't do anything about this, but the RV manufacturer can. They can build campers with 50 amp systems. Let's see what that does. Back to babies. We already know that we can't stick another baby on this 30 amp system, but instead we can provide it with its own juice source, with each hose larger so it can handle 50 amps of flow. The second system, which is referred to as a leg, is not drawing any juice from the other three babies at all, and everyone is happy. In fact, we can add more babies onto this leg and everything works fine. We'll discuss how this system is possible in a minute, but for now let's look at the numbers. Using our formula, if we take 120 volts and now multiply it by 50 amps, we get 6,000 watts. Remember, that's per leg, so now we can have a total between the two legs of 12,000 watts. That's three and a third times more draw than a 30 amp system. To put that into perspective, that's enough to feed 10 babies. So I know what you're thinking. On a 50 amp feed, how do we get the power for this second leg? Well, that's because the 50 amp outlet at the power post is actually a 240 volt outlet. What? How can that be? You said that my camper is only using 120 volts. Shouldn't that blow everything up? Don't worry, everything's fine. To understand what's going on, let's look at the types of outlets and how they are wired. RV power supply panels usually have three types of outlets. A 120 volt 20 amp, a 120 volt 30 amp, and a 240 volt 50 amp. The 120 volt 20 amp is the outlet we are all familiar with. It is a duplex outlet, meaning it has two spots to plug into. Each receptacle has three slots. The narrow slot is the hot slot, and the wide slot is the neutral slot. Unlike our simple baby representation, electricity has to actually flow in a continuous path. So these are kind of the equivalent of in and out doors for electricity. The U-shaped slot is the grounding slot. That is the backup pathway just in case there is some sort of breakdown in the main system. It's part of all these wiring systems and is there to help keep you safe. This is a 30 amp outlet. Most campers under 28 feet are wired for 30 amps and will use this outlet. The plug and cord for this is heavier than for the 20 amp outlet as it needs to carry more juice. This receptacle also has three slots, a hot, a neutral, and a ground. Last is the 50 amp outlet. Yes, this is a 240 volt outlet, but the campers and RVs that use it probably don't use 240 volts. Confused? Okay, let's go back to the juice drum in the host scenario. Remember how I said that we are providing another source of juice, which we called a leg? Well, that's the idea behind how 240 volts works. If we take the two hoses, make them larger in diameter, and combine them into one larger hose, we increase stream pressure and volume. Likewise, if we combine the two 120 volt lines into one, we double the stream to 240 volts. Pretty neat, huh? So here's a secret. Just because you can combine them doesn't mean you have to. Instead of combining the leads, we just use each 120 volt 6,000 watt leg separately. The breaker box is wired with two main breakers, one for each leg. One half of the power panel is wired to one half of the camper, while the other half is wired to the other half. Now there are some larger RVs that actually do have 240 volt appliances like clothes dryers, electric ovens or such, but they're more of an exception. A pretty good indication as to if a camper or RV is wired for 50 amps is to look at the air conditioners on the roof. If there's only one AC unit, it's probably a 30 amp rig. If there are two or more ACs, it's going to be wired for 50 amps. The power line pigtail for 50 amps is also much heavier than one for 30 amps. In a 50 amp dual AC unit, each leg of the panel will have one of the AC units wired to it, plus about half of the other appliances. Since AC units take a lot of energy, this is the best way to distribute power to them without overloading a leg. You might ask, if 50 amps seems so much better, why don't they just make all RVs 50 amps? 
Well, there are two main reasons, need and cost. If you don't have a lot of appliances that need a lot of power, then 50 amps would be unnecessary. 30 amps should be plenty of power for an average camper. 50 amp systems are also more expensive to manufacture, which would be passed on to the consumer and make medium to smaller campers even more expensive. Oh, there's just one more thing for you people with 30 amp campers. If you're not in a campground and you see one of these outlets, don't assume you can safely plug into it. These are also commonly installed to use with welding machines or clothes dryers and will be wired for 240 volts. Plugging into one of these will not be a good day for you or your rig. That's all for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to high five that like icon, jingle the notification bell, and go ahead and subscribe. Thanks to everyone for watching and supporting my channel. To me, you are all superstars. Until next time, keep camping.